Okay, so in this video, we're going to be building this VR first person shooter for your mobile device. Now, when you're developing for mobile VR, you have to keep in mind that your phone is going to be in one of these headsets here, so you don't have a controller. There exists Bluetooth controllers, but there's really nothing standardized between Android and iOS quite yet, so you can't always assume that anyone's going to have a controller to use. So in this tutorial, we're going to use an auto-fire technique in order to shoot our zombies. So I don't know about everyone else, but I typically learn best through projects, so I'm going to gear this tutorial towards beginners. However, I'm only going to be able to go over all the different material briefly, so you are going to want to do your own research in order to get a better foundation underneath of you. So in order to build this VR game, we're going to use the Google VR plugin with the Unity 3D video game engine. That way we can build out to Android phones or iOS phones, and it will work with any Google Cardboard style VR headset or Daydream headset. Now, one other thing to keep in mind when you're building out to iOS, you need to go through a program called Xcode. So you're going to need to download that if you don't have it. A couple people were asking for more information on that, so I'm going to go over that more towards the end of the video. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and definitely let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video. Okay, so to get started, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way first. Let's get everything downloaded that we're going to need. So obviously, if you don't already have Unity 3D, we're going to need that. Go to their website and download the personal edition. It's free. And whenever you're prompted to install the modules for iOS or Android, depending on what phone you want to use to build out to, make sure you install those modules. So Android, install Android. iOS, install iOS. Also, while we're doing this, if you're going to build out the iOS, you're also going to need Xcode. So make sure you download Xcode as well. It's a lengthy download, but you're going to need it in order to build out to your iPhone. So beyond that, we're going to need the Google VR SDK for Unity. So go to this website here. I'll link to the I'll put a link to this in the description, but download the Google VR SDK here. Also, I'll put a link to my website. Go to my website, and I have some game assets that we're going to need. I'll organize everything into a game asset folder here. So download that, and then also click on this link. You're going to need to make a BlendSwap account and uh, sign up for BlendSwap, and then download this gun here, N3RV. Once all that stuff's downloaded, you should have these three things on your desktop here. So with that, open up Unity and let's start a new project. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it VR Test. Okay, first let's get everything into our assets folder. So drag the game assets into Unity, drag in the Google VR for Unity package, and drag in the gun. Okay, hit Control S or Command S and save the scene. Then go to File, Build Settings, and switch your platform to either Android or iOS. I'm going iOS. All right, so now that that's done, let's start setting up our scene. So go into here and you can delete the directional light. Now go to Google VR and go to Prefabs and drag in GVR Viewer Main. That's actually all we need to do, and now we would have pretty much a working VR game, except for there's nothing in our scene yet. So, right click in the hierarchy here, and add a 3D object plane. Now, let's move our camera to 000. Now, bring it up a little bit. Now, if you want to look around inside of Unity, if you hit the Q key, that kind of allows you to strafe. And then if you hit the um, option key, or I don't know what that is on PC, maybe it's alt on PC, and drag your mouse at the same time, that allows you to look around. Okay, so that being said, go to your assets folder again, click on the game assets, and drag in this texture onto the plane. Now, click on the plane, and go down here, and we're going to add a normal map to it. So click here, and we want to add... Add the floor normal. This will give uh, height information to our image, so it'll allow light to bounce off it and give the effect of depth. Now that your plane's in there, right click in the hierarchy and add a light. Uh, let's add a point light. And just bring that up a little bit there. Now click on your plane 
and copy and paste it into a setup like this. So you'll essentially have an S shape like this. So now we need to create our walls. So right click in the hierarchy again here and create, create another plane. Drag it over here. Rotate it about the Z by 90 degrees. And we need to start creating these walls. So drag on this uh, grunge brick texture. Expand this and then we need to add the brick normal map. So you should have something that looks like this. That looks pretty terrible. I think we need to change the tiling a little bit. That looks all right. Actually, let's then rotate this by 90 so that our bricks look fairly normal there. Now with this done, we need to create walls around this entire structure. So do the exact same we did for the floor and just copy and paste this. Try not to make anything overlap because that will actually cause the textures to flicker when you click play. Now we can click play to make sure everything looks okay. This will take us into the game view. If you hold alt or option and the mouse, you can start to look around. Alright, so everything looks okay there. Now let's add a ceiling. We should be able to hit control or command and copy all these floor planes and then hit copy and paste and drag this up and then we actually have to, since it's a single sided shader, we have to flip it around. So let's click play and see how our ceiling looks. Alright, everything looks alright. Now go to your main camera and change the clipping plane near to 0.1. Now in the game we're getting this kind of weird effect with the ground. I think it has to do with the smoothness so um, Unclick play and go to this go back to the scene view and click on one of these floor planes and let's change the smooth this down to eh, something like this, like something around 0.1. Now click play again and everything should have like a smoother, kind of darker look to it. Yeah. Alright. Everything looks good. Now click somewhere in the scene and create a new game object and let's just call it uh, rename it scene. And then let's Highlight all of the planes, and let's drag them into this scene game object, making them children, just to clean up our scene a little bit. Now, right click on the scene and add, let's see, add a cube. And we're going to create some, uh, and we're going to create some crates. Now, if you double click on the cube, it should kind of zoom in. Drag on this wooden texture here, expand this, and then we have a crate normal map that we're going to add as well. And then with the cube clicked on, copy and paste a couple of those and just kind of move them, move them around sporadically here. Okay, so now let's add some zombies to our scene. Go to the asset store and type in free zombie character. We're going to want to grab this one here and import that. Okay, so once that zombie is imported, you should have a zombie uh, folder right here. Now, you might be asking yourself, how are we going to get all these zombies to move intelligently? Well, we're not going to use any crazy AI or anything like that. We're actually going to use uh, Unity's built-in pathfinding. So to do that, we need to first bake a nav mesh. So go to your scene uh, get parent game object here and make everything static. Hit yes to change all the children. And this might bake lighting, it might take a minute. But with that done, go to Window Navigation, and that will pull up this navigation menu here. Uh, just actually hit Bake. And what this is going to do is it bakes this navigation mesh, so all of these blue areas are areas in, areas in which the enemy can move. If you'll notice, there's no blue around the cubes, so that the zombies, in our case, will actually walk around and avoid those cubes. Now, if we just place a zombie in there, it's not going to actually move. We need to set a destination for the nav mesh agent. The nav mesh agent is going to be our zombie, and the destination is going to be our camera. We're going to set that relationship in code later. For now, let's just add our zombie to the scene and get everything set up. So, go back to your inspector, and go to zombie, click on model, and find Z walk. 
um, go to the inspector here under rig animation type change it to legacy now do the same for um, we're going to actually do this for the fallback as well because we're going to need the fallback animation that's in there now drag this zombie into the scene first we can remove this animator component add a component uh, animation and let's rename it zombie and it's going to be asking for an animation clip so expand this zombie here and let's drag in the walk animation and then close this and go to zombie fall and drag in the back fall animation that should add both there okay now let's add our nav mesh agent so go to add component and put nav mesh agent and let's set the stopping distance to three so um, change this from zero to three so now we can minimize these and add another component, add a capsule collider. Now double click your zombie, that'll zoom you in. And you can do this really however you want, but I am going to move this collider up to just the zombie's head. This is where we're going to detect collisions from a bullet that we're going to fire from a gun. So to make this a little bit more difficult, you can make the collider as big as you want, but I'm going to just pretty much make it the size of the head that way you have to shoot the zombie in the head for it to die alright so that looks about good there now let's add our script that's gonna make our zombies move so add a component uh, type in zombie script dot cs new script c sharp create an ad uh, we might need to remove the dot cs so just type in zombie script, create an ad. Double click on this, and I'm gonna put a link in the description, but go to my website, and under zombiescript.cs, copy and paste all of this code here. Hit command S to save it, and let's test it out. So let's go back to our scene and grab our zombie, and let's move him over here let's click play and go back to the scene view and you'll see him moving towards the camera okay so that was good except for I don't like how fast he was going so let's set the speed to 1 see what that looks like and you'll see his walking animation is playing Alright, so that looks about good. Now let's go over what this code is doing really quick. I tried to comment this the best I could, but first of all, we want to first declare the transform of the goal, which is going to be our main camera, and then declare the nav mesh agent, which we're going to then create the references in in the start function. So the goal of the nav mesh is to go to the main camera, and the agent, we're going to set that equal to. Uh, this component's nav mesh agent, which this uh, when we do get component, when we do get component here, uh, since the script is on the zombie, it's going to get the nav mesh agent of this zombie. Uh, now next, we're going to set the agent's destination to the goal position, which is the position of the main camera, and then we're going to get the animation component walk and play that. So that's why the zombie is now walking. Now on trigger enter is going to get called anytime a collider enters the zombies collider that, that we just put on its head. That's going to be uh, mainly for the bullet. So anytime the bullet enters that collider, this function is going to get called. And what this is first going to do is disable the zombies collider so no more collisions can occur. We're going to then destroy the bullet, that's the collision object, and then we're going to stop the zombie from moving forward by setting its destination from the main camera to the zombie's current position. We're going to then stop the walking animation and play that falling back animation and then we're going to destroy this zombie in six seconds. Now we're going to instantiate a new zombie which is create a new zombie and we're going to put that at a random set of coordinates. Um, for the X it's going to be between negative 12 and 12 and for the Z it's going to be between negative 13 and 13 the Y is going to remain constant at 0.01 that just keeps it a little tiny bit off of the ground plane now 
the only other thing that we need to worry about here is, so, we have the zombie agent stopping distance at three scene units away from the main camera. What if it's closer than that? Our gun is not going to be able to shoot the zombie. So we have to account for that. So if the zombie gets instantiated, the new one, at a distance of less than or equal to three scene units from the main camera, we're going to create a new uh, random set of coordinates until that becomes greater than three scene units away from the actual zombie. Okay, now, before I forget, go back to your capsule collider and set this to is trigger. That way that is trigger function gets called. Go to your, re oh, you know what? Right click in your assets folder and create a new folder. We're gonna call this resources. This lets you dynamically load things in code from your resources folder. So we're going to drag the zombie in to that folder. That creates a zombie prefab. That way we can actually reload the zombie every time one gets killed. So double click your zombie here and let's just place a couple sporadically around the scene. So we'll start with maybe, I don't know, three on each side. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now let's get everything ready for our gun to work. So first we're gonna need, um, we're gonna need a bullet. So right click in the hierarchy and create a sphere. Scale this down to 0.1 across the board and then go back to your assets folder, right click and create a new material and let's call it uh, bullet mat. And then click on this and change the albedo down to black. And drag this onto the sphere. Well, let's get it out of this zombie's head. That should make the bullet black. All right, looks like an okay size. Let's rename this bullet. Okay, so the bullet's already got its collider, so let's minimize all these, and let's just, we need to add a rigid body for the untrigger function to work. So add a rigid body and uncheck use gravity. Save the scene and drag this bullet into your resources folder. That'll make a bullet prefab, and then we can delete that from there. Now, go to your main camera, and this is basically gonna be our, we're gonna consider it our player. So let's add an audio source and we're gonna drag in from the, our game assets folder that Beretta noise. This is our uh, bullet sound clip. Okay, now we need to get our gun in the scene. So let's go to uh, this N3RV, find this and uh, drag this into the scene. Expand this and we actually only want this little guy here. So pull this up out of that gun, break the prefab instance and we can delete all of this. This is going to be the gun that we're going to use. So we need to reposition this such that uh, we can see it in the scene view. So grab this gun and get it up in front of your camera here. Might have to rotate it here so it looks like our camera is facing this way. Okay, so now we can see our gun. So if you switch over to the game tab, you can kind of see your gun there and we can still actually manipulate the gun so let's uh, rotate it about the Y, maybe a little bit. I had mine at somewhat of an angle. And let's change the X position such that we can see it. Okay, that looks about good. You want the gun to be pointing towards the center of the screen. That, that is what's ideal. Now let's add an animation component. And let's create a quick gun animation. It will take very little time at all. So with this highlighted, go to animation and let's create one. Let's just call it um, gun. And go to about uh, 0.2 seconds and move the gun backwards on the Z to about, uh, about there. So now if we go back to this keyframe and we press play, we'll see the gun is just doing a little bit of recoil. That's all we want. So if you notice, it created these first two keyframes for us. That's our default position. So copy that and let's paste that down at about 0.4. So now if we click play, we should have a quick little gun animation. Not, that might be too slow. So highlight these and let's move them to 0.1. Highlight these, let's move these to 0.2. And if we go back to the beginning and click play, yeah, that gives us a nice little recoil animation. So if we go back to our project, we should have that gun animation right here and we can drag that right into its place there. Now, so we can make sure that the gun moves with the camera. Drag the gun up on top of the main camera. That'll make it a child. Now, if we click play, 
you'll notice that the gun should move with the camera. Okay, something got screwed up there. We got to pull this back down. Uh, with your animation, uncheck play automatically. And for this audio source, uncheck play on awake. So now our gun should be moving with the camera. It actually looks like our gun might be backwards. Let's just flip this around here. Now what we need to do is right click on the gun and create a 3D object sphere. We're going to create a little sp a spawn point, so rename this spawn point, and that is where the bullets are going to spawn from the gun. So go to your scene view and click on that. Let's make this a scale of 0.01 and let's uncheck disable its collider. Now we might have to zoom in on this, we want this to be coming right out of the point of the gun. That looks alright. Now let's go back to our main camera and add a component. We're gonna call this player script. New script, create an ad. Now double click on this and again go to my website here and we're gonna copy and paste all this code. So again I tried to comment this code the best I could. We'll just go over it briefly here. So first we're going to declare a couple game objects. We need references to the gun, the spawn point, and we need to, need to create a boolean called is shooting. I'll get to that later. In the start function, we're going to you know create our references to the gun and the spawn point by getting the children of the game object that this script is currently on, which is the main camera. And then if you're on iOS, you need to explicitly tell iOS to try to reach for a target frame rate of 60, which is something that's reasonable. And we're going to set our is shooting boolean to false. Now, this script is going to deal with the auto fire for the gun. So what we're going to do is cast a ray from that spawn point, and if it if that ray collides with one of the colliders on the zombie, it's going to then shoot. But this has to occur in the update function because, well, the update function gets called every frame. So we need to be constantly checking every frame to see if that ray is intersecting with one of the zombie's colliders. Now, in order to do that, we have to put it in the update function, which will cause, if it is hitting one of the zombies colliders it'll cause the gun to shoot rapid fire every frame which is something that we don't want that creates an unpleasant experience so what we actually need to do is uh, delay at least a second between gunshots that's why we had to create this enumerator up here called shoot which we're then gonna call down here when the colliders name contains zombie we're gonna call we're going to call that um, shoot coroutine it's called um, now in order to do that, we need to create a boolean. That's what that is shooting is for. So uh, if shooting is false, if we're not actually shooting, only then can we call the shoot function. So inside the shoot function, we're going to instantiate a bullet at the position and rotation of the spawn point, and we're going to then add force to that bullet, which is going to propel it forward. Then we're going to play that gunshot sound and we're going to play our gun animation, which is that recoil that we created. We're then going to destroy the bullet so that it can't go through that zombie and hit other zombies. And then we're going to delay for that one second. And after that one second, we will set is shooting to false so that we can shoot again. So now, if you click play, you'll notice, well, you know what, really quick, there is a line here. Uh, after we declare the raycast hit, that's what the raycast is going to hit into, we do something called uh, debug.drawRay. That is going to allow us to, well, that's going to draw a green ray in the direction of our raycast. So as you can see, our spawn point is actually pointing upward, which is something that we don't want. So if you go to uh, the main camera and click on the spawn point, we actually want to rotate that until it is facing straight out from the gun. Now it also might be a little crooked. Oh that actually looks okay. Yeah, so that's what we want we want right there. That green line pointing straight out from the gun. So now we're in play mode. A feature of Unity, I guess, is that when you're in play mode you can make changes, which is good, but they don't get saved. So let's copy this component and unclick play, go back to the spawn point, and paste component values. Now let's save the scene, and when we click play again, we should actually be able to shoot zombies. Okay, so we got problems. 
First of all, to make it easier to shoot the zombies, let's, let's create a site. So underneath the spawn point, let's create a 3D object cube. Double click on that. And we're going to just scale that uh, on its Z axis. Let's actually make it uh, maybe about a thousand. So it'll just create this big long line, drag that towards the end of the gun. And let's make sure that it's actually centered there. It is not. So let's move it until it's coming out from the gun. Okay, we want to we want to line that up with our spawn point. So that looks good. Now let's make our site red. So right click here and create a material. Let's call it red mat. Change the albedo all the way to red. And let's change the emissive property to red as well. So it creates a, a bright red texture and drag this onto that cube that we just created. So now we should have our site. Now we have to figure out why our gun is moving. Oh, it's because our animation is screwed up. Somehow we got multiple keyframes in here, so I don't think we want these two here. Well, you know what? We're gonna have to, re let's redo this, actually. <laughs> Delete all these keyframes. Let's make sure our gun's still in position. And let's go to the point 0.1 mark. And let's move our gun a tad bit backwards. All right, that looks OK. Copy these keyframes again. And let's check and see what this looks like. All right, looks pretty good. We're killing zombies. The only problem I see here is that our bullet is a little bit too big. So let's go back to the resources folder, go to our bullet, and let's make this 0.01. Hit control S and I believe we're good. All right, so everything looks good. Now all that's left is to build out to our phone. So if you go to file build settings, like I said, if you don't have these modules installed, there'll be buttons here. You're gonna have to install these modules for whether or not you wanna build out for iOS or Android. I'm building out for iOS. Android should build right out. iOS, you're gonna need Xcode. It's a little bit more involved, um, but before you do build out, at least on iOS, you're gonna wanna change this bundle identifier to something like com dot your name and then dot the app name so I'm gonna put you know FPS test something like that and then actually on either iOS I don't know if you have to do this on um, iOS but I'm gonna change it to landscape left I know that when you build out for Android you do want to change the default orientation to landscape left so with that let's build and run let's uh, save our file as iOS build control save and on iOS this is gonna take a little bit and it's going to bring up Xcode while this is building it should be noted that the way that we created that um, that gun kind of scope or the laser sight that's probably not the best way to do it um, normally yeah, you can do that in code with something called line render so just a side note if you are gonna build a real game you probably don't want to make a laser sight the way that I just did now, all you have to really do in Xcode, if you don't already have a free Apple developer account, you're gonna be prompted to sign up for one. So do that, and then the only other thing that you really have to do is choose a team. So if, if you don't already have a team, it'll, it'll let you create one, no problem, but mine is Matthew Hallberg, personal team. So choose that, and then pick your iPhone up here, and click play, and it'll build out no problem. So that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video. Good night.